Hello and welcome to the MessBridge introductory video. Uh, today I'm going to be going over the new um, functionality that I've added to the BG Mesh API using my own custom um, polygon or mesh proxy. Uh, this is a, uh, a module which you can import and use to simplify your own endeavors using the BG Mesh API or rather modify mesh data within the BG. So let me show you this first example to see what this is all about. Um, if we switch to the default camera, uh, and scroll out and then run it, you'll see it's growing and that's nothing really special. We could do that using a shape key or a scale. But if you look and I, I if you look at the bottom left and see the um, animation playing, I have oops, I have uh, added no such thing. Um, nor do I have anything else apart from mesh modification going. So let's look at this. Look how many lines of code there are there is one, two, three, four, five, six. okay, if you exclude white space, you've got three lines for imports, two, four, six, eight, so you've got eleven lines of code, which is very small. Um, and this is a simple example of growing a cube. So what happens? Well, every frame we run this code, we've imported the special um, class, base class called, or in this case, not so much of a base class, called mesh, from the mesh bridge module. We've imported random and BGE, First, we try and get the mesh um, property from the game object. If it doesn't exist, we create it and then return it. And this simply is an instance of a mesh um, class. And then for each polygon in this mesh that we've created, this mesh data, in each polygon in that mesh data, we um, change the position of the mesh uh, so it moves along its normal um, uh, at a distance of the normal length, which is 1. Uh, times by 0 0.05, which, so it's 1 times 0 0.05, in other words, one, uh, 0 0.05. Um, now, first things first, um, I've used capital letters or upper, uppercase X, Y, Z to reflect the existing documentation and uh, namespace conventions, naming conventions, sorry, of the Mesh API, um, found on BG uh, docs. Uh, and secondly, it's very small and very simple. Now, you'll notice that it has polygon.normal, and this is Firstly, nor, neither polygon.normal nor polygon.xyz are actual attributes you can use on the existing BG Mesh API, but they add functionality that I thought was much needed and is very simple to interface with. Um, and secondly, what is Mesh? Well, Mesh is simply a, a class which is a wrapper around the existing Mesh API but adds increased functionality. So you've seen this and you sort of understand, hopefully, what this is doing is simply growing the polygons by moving them. Uh, but let's look at another one, which is called Wave. Now I've created this again. Uh, it took about two minutes. And if you see when I run it, if I zoom out, you'll see you have this almost a C. Um, and the reason it looks laggy is because I'm running it at three ti tick times, sorry, uh, 20 times per second rather than 60 in order to, to have a nicer effect. It looks nicer than running it every frame. But the uh, actual frame rate isn't taken much of a hit. Um, so what is this, how is this working? What is this voodoo magic? Um, you'll see this as you 0.4 millisecond logic for however many universities you can see there. Uh, 289, I believe, unless that's wrong. Uh, yes, 289. Um, and the way it works is quite simple. If we scroll down, we'll see. Um, we get a height displacement max, and then we, get, we uh, create a random integer from negative height or negative 2, 2 plus 2, so we get a random inch, uh, random float anywhere between that range. We take the original Z position of this vertex and then set the new position as the original Z position plus a random created position in the Z direction. Now you'll notice that I may be able to set data onto this vertex instance, that's because I haven't created a slots parameter or attribute to the class, which means they're writable. So you can actually add stuff in your game without having to create a whole new data system like dictionaries or your own uh, instance. You can instead use the existing mesh uh, vertex instances provided for by this class. Um, this is all well and good. It doesn't do much else that you've already seen. It simply iterates through the mesh vertices attribute rather than polygons and displaces them. But you're probably wanting something a bit more complex. So, of course, I wrote a pathfinder. I've written one before, but this is a more advanced uh, and more functional uh, iteration of that project. It's more concise and a lot easier to use. So let me run it and show you what's happening. Well, firstly, you'll see all this blue, no, this um, white and white circles and white lines. The white lines indicate polygons, and the white circles are the, the polygon centers using the polygon.position attribute. 
Um, secondly, if you see this little cube here, he has been able to walk around while these two have not, and that is because this cube here has a, an offset radius from the edge, whereas these are all using the shortest distance available. Now, recast itself has its own um, agent re radius parameter, which when you build a nav mesh will create the nav mesh with the radius size uh, already considered. How, however, um, there may be times when you don't have the ability to create nav meshes on the fly, or you wish to add dynamic obstacles which scale, and so on, and you need to be able to account for that. So in this case, I've created a function which moves the path away from the edge of the nav mesh. Now, this is a bit. This existing imp implementation isn't as good as it could be, uh, unless I use the path smoothing algorithm, because it simply moves the existing point every time a point is added using these um, vertex points on the edge of the mesh. Every time a uh, point is added to the path, it then moves it along the the polygon portal, which is a, a, basically any edge within so inside the um, nav mesh by a certain distance, so which is why it isn't uniformly the same this distance. Now I want to make it use the um, 90 degrees to the nav mesh edge, but defining what nav mesh edge is actually quite difficult in concept, um, in, in, in practice, although I think I can think of an example. Now it's very easy to use this actually, I've um, got all these basic parameters here, like showing your path, uh, and then if it has a radius attribute and so on, um, and then you can use the existing recast nav mesh. So if I delete this nav mesh here and then build another one, um, you will end up with problems for the other ones, of course, because they can't take into account the agent size. But this is perfectly fine, um, and that's basically what I've been working on. You'll see here is an older version of the the. MeshBridge API, but here is the pathfinder if I, if I show you here. It inherits from the, the Mesh class, and thus it's very easy to extend uh, MeshBridge. Um, and that's pretty much it, so I hope you guys, you should try that, it's lots of fun actually. You can do, it, makes you, it gives you the ability to do so much more without the, the necessary pains and troubles of um, the existing BGE Mesh API, which is very difficult to use if you're attempting to recreate what you can already do within the um, BPI, or rather the Blender Edit mode um, user interface. And that's all for now, so I hope you guys enjoyed and leave me any feedback.